Greetings, ladies and gentlemen of the internet. Jan Michael here, coming at you with a best of year thus far list. And I don't typically like to do these type of videos because I don't really have any deep insight into things that might have sneaked under the radar. This list is really going to be more akin to something you would probably make at home yourself. Though I am going to try to limit my picks to things that I feel could get into the respective best of year award ceremonies. Uh, not necessarily just into like best picture, best anime, and so on and so forth, but things that could get nominations. With a few exceptions, things that I, I really enjoy that I want to talk about. But I'm going to try to contain the list so it's not super fucking crazy. <laughs> uh, I also do want to mention that there is a lot of stuff I have not actually gotten to play yet in the in the case of video games there's a lot of really well-reviewed games that have released that i just haven't had a chance to play yet i don't have a lot of time to play these games anymore so there's definitely going to be things missing on this list i will give an honorable mentions at the end but just be prepared for that uh with that being said let's go ahead and jump in i'm just going to list them off in the order that i consume these products so for those of you that are like, oh, he's done with movies, time to click off the video. Ha ha, I'm on to you fuckers. So let's begin the list. The first game I wanted to talk about is the remake of the original Dead Space. That original one came out some time ago now, and I got to play it back when it first released, which I think is one of the best horror games of all time. I was also a fan of its sequel, which has one of the best video game openings of all time. So I was super excited to jump into this remake. And at first I thought we were just going to get uh, some quality of life improvements, you know, maybe better visuals, better sound design, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And yeah, th those things are there, but they did a lot more with it than I thought they were going to. Uh, for instance, the silent protagonist actually gets a voice in this version. Uh, the voice actor for Isaac Clarke really didn't come into play until the second installment, but they took the original voice cast, they brought him back to redo the lines, and I think that was a fantastic move. You definitely feel more of a connection with Isaac because you see and you hear his frustrations. A uh, very, very good move. There were also sections in the original that I was dreading having to go through this version. Like in the original one, there was a, a section where you had to destroy asteroids that were coming towards the ship. And I died so many goddamn times in the original version. They completely did away with it in this one, which I think was a great move. And there's a couple of other moments where they kind of redid things or removed things and they added newer things that I think work a lot better. So yeah, they, they definitely went above and beyond. They listened to the criticisms of the original game and they just completely uh, reworked it to their benefit. So I think this is a fantastic remake. And honestly, I can't see it get nominated for Game of the Year because it is a remake it's too similar to the first one yes they do a lot of different things with it but it's still far too similar really if you just play them back to back it's the same game with just a, a couple of differences and that's about it that being said i can still see it getting into like maybe sound design um a couple of other categories i'm sure there's going to be giving some sort of consideration to it but I don't see this game of the year nominee worthy, but I still say it's a great game that you need to go play if you have not. And even if you played the original, you gotta go play this one because there's just enough differences and the annoyances are gone and it's still just so well designed that it's definitely worth just the time and effort to get through it. Moving on with another game, I have Hi-Fi Rush. This one came out of nowhere. My friend actually recommended this one to me. He was playing it. He called me and said, dude, you got to try this game out. It's on Game Pass. It's not super long, but it's really, really cool. I like the concept, so on and so forth. So I heard him out. I said, ah, it's a Game Pass game. Yeah, I'm down for it. Something nice and quick. I jumped in and I'm so glad I did because this game completely blew me away. It's a sort of rhythm action game where you fight to the beat of the music in each stage and that might sound annoying at first because I, I as soon as I heard the concept I'm like I'm not too 100% sure about it but the way that it's designed is very well done you attack to the beat so if you try to attack in between beats your character stalls the attack it doesn't attack until the beat comes back but because of the way that the whole levels are structured, you see like kind of the bobbing and the weaving of the of, of the music in the background. So if you ever lose beat, it's easy to kind of get back on it just by following the motion of the world. 
And it starts off simple enough. You just have basic combos. There's not too much to it. But as the game progresses, you get more you get more party members, you unlock newer combos, and it really becomes this really cool cacophony of, of madness, if you will, just keeping up with the beat. You don't ever have to get so in, incredibly in-depth in the combat to get past any of the enemies. You can still do basic stuff and get by just fine, but if you really dive deep into it, there are some very impressive things that I've seen done. I also really like these characters. I think they're all very colorful. They're all very unique from each other. They don't blend in with, with one another, so you can tell them apart. It's on Game Pass. It won't cost anything extra if you already have that, and it's well worth the time to go through it, especially with it being such a short game. You can really get through it in, in a few sittings, uh, especially if you, if you play for long periods of time. Moving on to anime, I have Blue Lock. Once again, the exact same friend who recommended Hi-Fi Rush called me up and said, dude, have you seen the Blue Lock anime? You really got to check that out. I listened to him and at first I saw, oh man, soccer, it's a sports anime. I get that they typically are very good, but I'm just not a sports guy myself. I don't really care about sports anime that much either. But he said, no, 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 you got to check this out because it's not a traditional soccer anime. The concept here is they take the best strikers from all across Japan. And strikers are basically the people that, that make the goals in soccer. They put them in this sort of kind of building school type deal and basically say, hey, if you are able to eliminate everybody else, you will be able to get into Japan's like World Cup team. Like no questions asked, you're just in. But if you get eliminated, your soccer career is basically over, right? You can still play soccer, but you're not going to get into any national teams or anything of that nation, uh, uh, that notion. So there's like high stakes involved. And at first I was like, okay, it sounds cool enough, but we know how this is going to go, right? You're going to be introduced to to his best friends in the group and they're gonna get along and this is the group that's gonna make it all the way to the end and so on and so forth but no no like maybe the first half kind of plays out that way but things get changed up crazy in the second half and people that you got to know very well start to get eliminated to the point i'm like holy shit i thought that was gonna be a very important character down the line and enemies become friends and it's just the groups start to get really crazy and mixed up and they did a fucking fantastic job with this anime, and I'm super excited for the second season. There's a movie that was also announced that's going to take place before the show even starts. So once again, my recommendation, even if you're not a sports anime guy like I am, I still recommend this one, right? There are just so many outstanding and shocking moments that it's well worth to go through the entire thing. Uh, huge recommendation for this one. Switching over to movies, I've got to talk about John Wick Chapter 4. I'm pretty sure everybody said everything there is about the movie, so this is just me saying, yeah, it's it's fucking fantastic. I don't think it's perfect by any means, but I think it's another fucking excellent installment. I would have loved to have seen this be the end of John Wick, but I think they just announced another movie is coming, so if it makes money, they'll continue making them, I guess. I would like to kind of maybe tackle a little bit something that I, I started reading about lately where... A lot of people, new people that kind of went into this movie weren't liking it because they're like, it's ridiculous. He's falling out of like four story buildings and he gets up like nothing. He gets shot like a million times and he's okay. And it got me thinking that, you know what? If this ends up being your first John Wick movie, I think you're not going to have a, as great a time as maybe other people who have been with the series for the long run. You'll still have a good time. Like there's still plenty to really to really uh, admire about this version. Like the cinematography is beautiful, the camera work all excellent, but I think you're gonna be off put by maybe the craziness of what happens. Uh, versus if you start with the original one, not saying that one's super realistic, but at least is toned down enough that you can buy a lot of the action and, and what he gets through. And it starts to, to ratchet up to this installment. So if you start from the beginning, go to this one, I think you're a lot more accepting of the character and the world and the way that everything plays out uh, versus just jumping into this one right away. I don't know if this is going to get a Best Picture nomination. I don't think so. Even the people that were predicting it back when it came out have already kind of dropped it. But who knows? Maybe maybe cinematography? Probably not. I, I don't think so. They got to just create a Best Stunts category at the Oscars. That's how this one gets in. So still, 
Recommend it if you have not seen it yet. Jumping back into anime, I finished the sixth season of My Hero Academia. Yes, the show's been going on for six seasons now. And this one is probably one of the best seasons that it's had. Which is great because the fifth season I thought was pretty disappointing. I, I, I can't say it was terrible, but I was not a huge fan of that one. So I thought, uh-oh, I think the show's running out of steam. I don't know what else it's going to be able to pull out to bring me back in. But damn did it do it with the sixth season. So if you've been following up on it, you know what I'm talking about. If you've fallen behind, you're, maybe, you're like a season or two behind, I'd say... Just push through it because this season is fucking fantastic and it sets up pretty much what I feel is going to be the the final battle. Although I think the manga is still going so I have no idea. Maybe we got another three more seasons left. I, I have no clue but uh, just this season alone really good. My Hero Academia has been nominated for Anime of the Year in the past so I could easily see this being another contender in Best, of, uh, best Anime of the Year. And if not, I could still see it get into a couple of categories, especially if they bring back like best fight scene. Uh, those are where shows like this really shine. So uh, big recommendation, especially if you've kind of fallen behind on that one. And yeah, we'll, we'll see if it does get a nomination at the end of the year. Gonna go off on a little tangent and talk about the Super Mario Bros. movie. This is not gonna get any nominations. I don't even think it's gonna get animated film. Unless everything else sucks. But I wanted to talk about it because I enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. I actually draw parallels to playing a Mario game where when I play a Mario game, I'm not expecting this grand story or anything of that notion where it's going to tug at my heartstrings. I'm just looking for a fun experience. And that's exactly what the movie delivers on. It's just a fun experience. The movie itself isn't anything more than that and that's completely fine but I wanted to talk about it because I've been seeing so many articles and other people talk about how disappointed they were because they wanted something grander and something more and their argument is you know we got other animated films like Puss in Boots and Spider-Man and you know we expect something of, of that magnitude and sure fair enough if, if that's what you want out of your animated films We've had those in the past, so it's okay to want more of that in the future. But here's the thing. From Illumination, the company that does the Minions movies, th that's what you expect Puss in Boots level quality from. Illumination. And I know the counter argument to that is, well, they've had nominated movies in the past. Yeah, like fucking forever ago. As soon as I knew that Illumination was the one that was doing the Mario movie, I, I knew what to expect. Yeah, this is just going to be a, a silly, fun romp. That's what I got. That's what I enjoyed. So I'm sorry to say if you really were going into this one expecting something grand from Illumination, I think you need to reevaluate how you kind of go into your movies. That's my take on it. Although, kind of going off on another tangent, can I just say that uh, the next argument, and I fucking hate this one, the next argument that people were making is, Oh, this movie is doing really good, but bad with critics because it's it's not woke. And woke is the stupidest fucking shit I've ever heard. It's not an argument. It's basically, uh, I don't know, a catch-all when it comes to people who can't make arguments. They say, oh, it's woke, and that's like their yeah, argument done type deal, and it's so stupid. You've just lost all credibility with me if you use the word woke. Uh, and it's bullshit because when the movie first came out, there were articles I saw that said that the movie was woke because Princess Peach was a Mary Sue. She wasn't going to be the damsel in the distress. She could do no wrong. Oh, uh, they had to put a male a Luigi in, in that position and the movie was woke. And then as soon as all I started making like a billion dollars and people took that word and again, used it to their own argument. So again, word doesn't mean anything people just take it and they make it fit into their own argument however they want so it's all bullshit it's all bullshit um long story short the super mario bros movie is a lot of fun just don't expect anything more out of it and when it doesn't get nominated for animation for animated feature film uh it's not because the oscars are woke good lord i wish they were to the to to the way that you think it is but they're not they're they're really not next very quickly i wanted to talk about my favorite film of the year thus far dungeons and dragons honor among thieves 
I think, again, it's just a fun movie and I had such a blast with it. I laughed. I saw it with, with my D&D &D buddies. Yes, I'm a nerd. I'm part of a D&D &D crew. So we had a huge blast with it. I came out of it really enjoying it. So I'm sure something may beat it down the line. But as of right now, I can hugely recommend this one, especially if you are also a D&D &D nerd. I think you're going to find it to be lots of fun. And that's all I really have to say about that one. I, maybe it'll get nominated for visual effects to keep up with the theme of my video, but probably not. <laughs> I'll talk about Air real quick because a lot of people are putting it on their best picture predictions. I don't quite think it's going to get in. I know in my super early 2024 Oscar predictions, I put it on my list. And I was super excited to go see it just because of what everybody was saying, but I was kind of underwhelmed by it. And I think the reason for it was because I didn't like the directing behind it. I think there is a powerful movie there. There's some really good scenes where I think if it was just filmed differently and come and they were approached differently in the way that they filmed everything, it could have been a lot more impactful, but it wasn't. I'm not saying it's a bad movie by any means and there are solid performances in it. I just don't think it's as great as a lot of people are saying it is. And maybe I'm in the minority here, but I think because of that, I think it's going to fall off by end of the year. Maybe it'll get a couple of critics nominations here and there, but I just don't see this being best picture quality. So that's just me. Maybe I'll be proved wrong. We'll find out. Uh, wouldn't be a terrible pick, but it'd be a pretty underwhelming one. Keeping on with movies, we have Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. What can I say about this one that everybody else has not said yet? It's fucking fantastic. I, I'm not going to waste too much time. I think this could very well be in contention, not just for animated film, but it could be in contention for Best Picture. Again, we'll have to see how the rest of the year plays out and the big ones, how they do. But if not, I could really see this one getting a big push for, 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 for Best Picture. And I think it'd be very worthy of it. Uh, maybe the To Be Continued uh, is going to kind of turn some people away because of it, but... I, I still, this is gonna win animated film. Like, I don't know what else is gonna top this one, but good lord, I, I'm pretty sure this one's gonna win, and it could get Best Picture nominee. So, what more is there to say other than that? Jumping all the way back to video games, we got Resident Evil 4. And now, talking about the whole remake aspect where I said that Dead Space wasn't going to get nominated for Game of the Year because it was a remake. Resident Evil 4, however, I do think could be nominated for game of the year because yes it is a remake but it does enough different like there's huge chunks of the game that that feel completely different and there's there's ginormous aspects of gameplay and and the way that they throw the enemies at you and i think what they've done with it is very very impressive is it as impressive as when the first one released? No, I think that's just such a huge monumental accomplishment. That game came out right when it needed to and what it did with the genre was was revolutionary. But man, to get a modern remake of it and to kind of tell it in its own unique way, this one did a fucking fantastic job. And as such, I could see people really pushing it for game of the year. And if not there, then it definitely deserves a bunch of other nominations so we'll see we'll see i'm sure a lot of people are going to be pushing for this one but once again we just have so many good games this year that nobody's hurting for nominations i think i think we'll be like oh yeah we're not gonna do the remakes but we'll do these ones i can see that being the argument behind not giving it to resident evil <laughs> gotta talk about the new season of demon slayer if you've seen my review of the past season, then you'll remember that I said that Demon Slayer is probably my favorite anime of all time. And this new season is fine. It's good. But because of that, it's kind of disappointing. Uh, and I don't want to I don't want to make it seem like this is a bad season by any means, but the highs of the past seasons were just so goddamn high. We're like, there are moments where it touched me. I was getting choked up. I was like, oh my God, my feels. And this one just doesn't have that. And not that it couldn't. I was watching the series going, oh, I see where they're really gonna tear us apart this time around. And they like didn't take that extra step, which was kind of odd. But again, it's still a really good season. There's still really good action. There's a couple of shocking moments, but 
Uh, it's just not to the level as the past seasons. And, and maybe it's a disappointment because of that, but I don't think it's going to matter when it comes to anime of the year. I think this will still be in serious consideration just because it is so popular and the anime awards really are just a popularity contest. So had to talk about it, had to get kind of my frustrations out of the way, but uh, I still recommend it, still recommend it. Uh, I'm hoping the next season rectifies those wrongs. Um, whatever they may be i suppose it's, it's still a good season i i gotta stop being negative final anime we're gonna talk about is vinland saga season two the first season was really goddamn good and was nominated for anime of the year i liked it a lot i just didn't love it like a lot of other people did this second season is goddamn excellent and it's weird because I think if you loved that last season for its action, for its brutality, because of all of those aspects of it, you're probably not going to like this season. This season really is a completely different tonal shift. While the first one was about revenge and, again, the brutality about everything, this one really is more about forgiveness and seeking a peaceful route to resolution. And it's just such a huge shift in tone that I was actually completely blown away by it. And it's a slow burn. Like the first season's a slow burn. This one's a slow burn. I can see a lot of people not really getting behind it because of it. But I think it's fucking fantastic. It's characters, it's themes, uh, the way it, it eschews all the tropes that you think they're going to go with. I, I'm blown away by it. This could very well be my favorite anime of the year. If not for one other, which I'm not done with yet, I'll talk about it in a minute, but that one has aspects of it that, that I personally relate to, not relate to, but I, I love the environment that, that that one tells a little bit more over Vinland Saga. But that being said, this one's just so goddamn well. I highly recommend it. Oh, this one's gonna be a tough one to beat. Um, but we'll talk about my favorite in just a second here. We gotta talk about my favorite game of the year. Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I have no idea how they did it. <laughs> well, yes, I do, I played the game. But when Breath of the Wild released, I'm like, man, I have no idea what more you could possibly do with this type of setting. I think you pretty much did just about everything. Everything else is gonna seem like just small little minute changes and that's about it. Boy, was I wrong. It just everything. Everything is just cranked up to 11. This is the perfect sequel. It's It does what I always say a good sequel does. It takes concepts of the original, expands upon it while introducing new elements. And boy, did they do that here. The Zonai devices are complete game changers. The abilities, the rewind one, the fusing of the of the weapons together, the fucking game changers. The, the world map is fucking ginormous. Not just the main world, but you have the underground world. You got the sky world. Holy shit, the story. You know how it's gonna go. It's a Legend of Zelda game. They're not gonna do anything too crazy, but I was just so intrigued with the story. This is so good that I look back at Breath of the Wall and go, I don't even know how I'm ever going to be able to go back into that one. I'm probably going to think of all the things that this one does now and, and feel like, oh man, this one has its shortcomings. That's goddamn impressive. So yes, favorite game of the year. It is most definitely going to be nominated for game of the year. If it's not, that'd be a huge travesty. And that's really all I'm going to say without making this video even longer than it is. So... Yeah, play it if you haven't. If like the only negative thing about the game is it still has the stupid weapon degradation system, which I hate. That's fine. The other aspects are so goddamn strong that it's easy to look past them. Um, but if you hate that, just keep in mind that that really is the one really bad thing about it. But everything else, fucking ten out of ten. And now we're going to wrap things up with the honorable mentions, things that I haven't finished or or played or seen yet that I do need to talk about just because they've been getting such good reviews or are, are serious contenders for the best in their category. And I'm gonna start off with video games just because there's so many of them to the point that I had to create a list just to remind myself of all of them. Um, and we're gonna start with Hogwarts Legacy. This game's been getting fantastic reviews. A lot of people are saying that this is the Harry Potter game that they've always wanted. I've really wanted to play it, but Fuck J.K. Rowling, am I right? 
Uh, and I know the obvious counter-argument to that is, well, she, she didn't have any creative input in the game. It's not like she made the game herself or came up with the story or anything. And fuck that noise. You know she's gonna get royalties with every game sold, and I ain't giving that bitch a cent of my money. But I will say I'm conflicted because I'm a huge Harry Potter nerd. I grew up with the with the books, with the movies. I, I was 11 when the first movie came out. I was the exact same age when, when you get your letter from Hogwarts. That shit had a serious impact on me growing up. So yes, I really, really do want to play it. So, I don't know, maybe I'll pirate a copy later on down the line. Well, as long as she's not getting any money, I'll be okay, I guess. Um, Diablo 4, that one's also been getting fucking great reviews, but... Fuck Activision Blizzard, am I right? <laughs> This one a little bit less. I've, I've never played Diablo before, so I'm not as hungry to play it as like with the Hogwarts Legacy one. Uh, again, maybe if it gets like the nomination for Game of the Year, maybe I'll pirate it. Because I don't want to give Activision Blizzard any fucking money. They don't deserve it. They don't deserve it. Stop giving them fucking money and the microtransaction bullshit. And Bobby Kotick, fucking pay your employees. <sighs> Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Uh, the first one I did play, I really, really enjoyed it. I am going to be playing this one. There's just so many games that I want to play that this one's kind of fallen by the wayside, but I am planning on going back to play it just because uh, I really, really did enjoy the first one. And I hear this one is, is even better, so we'll, we'll see about that one. Uh, Street Fighter VI. I'm a big Street Fighter fan. I've I played all the mainline entries. Of course, I'm going to play this one again. It's fallen off by the wayside just because there's other stuff I've wanted to play first. But definitely want to jump into it. I hear this is one of the best fighting games of all time. Not just best Street Fighters, best fighting games of all time. Could we finally see a fighting game get nominated for Game of the Year? That'd be badass. Uh, lastly of all, we got to talk about the newest Final Fantasy that's been getting amazing reviews. It's been doing so goddamn well. I've been very impressed with it. Of course, I'm talking about the theater rhythm Final Fantasy game. I mean, just, I hear the music is outstanding in it. Just the, the beats, the visuals, all that stuff. I'm of course fucking with you. While I do enjoy that game, I'm currently playing it right now. I'm talking about Final Fantasy 16. Uh, here's a little interesting fact about me. I've actually played and beaten every mainline Final Fantasy game, including the online ones. So even if this game got like atrocious reviews, it was just getting trashed everywhere, I probably would still play it because it'd be a shame to stop now. But luckily, that's not the case. They're saying it's fucking amazing that it's great. It's one of the best Final Fantasies of all time. The music is outstanding, the story, everything. So I'm super excited. This is probably the next one I'm, I'm really going to jump into just because I'm super excited to play it. Uh, I'm very giddy with enjoyment. <laughs> um, in terms of anime, there's only one on my list that I'm currently still watching. It hasn't finished yet, uh, which is why I couldn't uh, include it into the main list. Uh, and it is currently probably my favorite anime. Uh, as I mentioned with Vinland Saga, if it wasn't for this one right here, Vinland probably would have been my number one. Uh, and that's Oshinoko. Being a movie guy, uh, working in the industry at points as well, um, seeing kind of like behind scenes drama and bullshit like that, I'm very, very fascinated in this topic uh, where you get an inside look at the 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 struggles and the bullshit that kind of go into making tv and making movies and all that stuff while having a very interesting kind of centralized mystery in a way it's not really the main focus i don't want to spoil it for those who haven't seen it um but um there's a central focus uh, of finding out of who the killer of somebody is and because of it they have to go into this industry and, and kind of play the bullshit game and I think it's all fantastic, just the way that it's all presented. I do wish the fantasy elements were more important to the overall story. They really is. When you first start watching that first episode, which is like an hour and a half, uh, there's a fantasy element to it. And I thought, oh my God, that's going to be super important. It really hasn't been. So I, I honestly think you could have written around it and still had a, an intriguing story. But other than that, I think it's really good. It's just got to stick that landing. I think it's almost over, so... I'm sure there's another season coming up soon, but this season's almost over. I just gotta stick the landing. It's gonna be my favorite anime of the year. Do it! And lastly, in terms of movies, there's only one that's officially released that I haven't had a chance to see yet, and that's Past Lives. It just hit the theaters near me. 
I am going to be seeing it uh, probably within a day or two. I, I am very excited to see just because a lot of people are saying this is going to be an Oscar contender. It's going to be a best picture contender, best best um, performances. Uh, so yeah, I'm very excited to see it. Uh, and I will be seeing it before I do my next Oscar prediction. So I'll kind of give more thoughts on it when I do that one. But yeah, that's, that's all I pretty much got for best of 2023. And that's the end of this video. I'm sure it was another long one. <laughs> I try to rush these, but I just have so many thoughts in my mind. And uh, I always look back on these videos and go, God, there was more I could have said. But I'm not going to because it's already a very long video. So please, ladies and gentlemen, tell me what you think the best of year has been so far. Do you agree with any of my picks? What is the next thing I should concentrate in terms of playing or seeing or viewing or whatever have you? And until very, very soon, everybody, please stay safe out there and have a good one.